Are you wondering if you need loopback to use Ecamm Live or to use Ecamm Live with Zoom? Uh, well, the answer to both of them is not necessarily. So I'm going to tell you all about it in this video coming up. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video we're talking all about loopback and uh, if you really need it in fact to use Ecamm Live uh, or specifically to use Ecamm Live with Zoom because if you've spent any time in the Ecamm Live community which is absolutely great by the way go to uh, Facebook uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Ecamm Live it's a great uh, community great community to be a part of full of wonderful people and it's uh, very supportive and uh, encouraging people to help uh, grow and learn from one another so I highly recommend that but a lot of people in there have probably heard people talking about uh, loopback and uh, think maybe that it is a requirement to use uh, Ecamm Live specifically with Zoom or Microsoft Teams or something like that but in fact you don't actually need it necessarily there are some specific use cases where you may need it but just to get all of the Ecamm goodness into your Zoom calls, it isn't entirely necessary. So what I thought I'd do is I'll show you how you actually get Ecamm Live and audio into your Zoom. Uh, and then we'll have a look at what are the use cases uh, where you might actually need loopback. And I'll show you how to set those up as well. So let's go straight into the uh, Zoom and Ecamm Live part. I should point out that this is actually a demo a, uh, a demo feature. It's not a demo feature. I'm going to give you a demo of the feature, <laughs> but it is a pro feature. So you do need to have an Ecamm Live Pro account to do this. Uh, and what it is, is a function called Virtual Camera. And I will now give you a demo of this. <laughs> if I go into demo mode, <clears throat> excuse me, and I will come into uh, output is where you'll find it. And here we have Virtual Cam, and you want to make sure that that is switched on. As a default, it will be in the off position, <laughs> but you just want to make sure that that is toggled to on. And what you can see is we've now got this little, oh, my uh, screen uh, controls disappear when I zoom in, but it's this little uh, button here, this little symbol rather, it's not a button. So that is now simulating a video source or a camera source rather, uh, virtually in the machine. So if I come over to my zoom settings for one second and I'll come over to, uh, Share my screen might help as well. And I'll come out of demo mode. Too many buttons to press at once for me, this is. <laughs> there we go. Come out of my demo mode might help. And then I'll come back over to my screen sharing. And uh, what you'll see is this is now in my Zoom controls. So here where you can select your camera, because I have now toggled that virtual camera on in Ecamm Live, you'll see as well as all of my other camera sources, we've also, I've got to get rid of that one, OBS virtual camera. I haven't used that for a long time. <laughs> you can now see that we've got Ecamm, virtual, uh, Ecamm Live virtual cam. So I'll click on that one. <clears throat> and as you can see, uh, it is now picking up <clears throat> my audio, uh, my video feed from my uh, Ecamm Live. So that is how simple it is to get my uh, video from Ecamm Live into Zoom. But what about my audio? What do we do about that? Well, the fact is, if you are just going to be doing uh, sort of normal presentations in Zoom, or you just want to use it for, as I say, some of its green screen functionality or things like that, then uh, all you need to do is go to audio and just make sure that your microphone is selected. There is no uh, difficulty in that. It is uh, still picking up my uh, my microphone just as it normally would. As you can see, my Shure MV7, uh, which, uh, by the way, I did a review of. I think it's a great mic. I'll uh, leave a link to the mic and the review in the description below. Uh, but yeah, it just works. So now you can have all of the green screen, screen effects, any overlays, things like that, bring in your uh, PowerPoint presentation or keynote presentation into your Ecamm Live production and have that you know going out to zoom there's no problem with that whatsoever um, the question is when do you need loopback so I'll tell you about that one next before I do I'll just mention one little zoom uh, feature that uh, I think some people may not be aware of so I at the moment have my speaker as my uh, headphones my in-ear monitors which are plugged into my mv7 so that's why it's coming up as my audio source but there is a little toggle here if you do leave your headphones plugged in because it's always better to have calls on headphones in my mind leads to much better audio quality for all involved um, but if you do then sometimes you may not hear like ringtones and things like that so there is a little toggle here use separate audio device to play ringtone simultaneously so if you toggle that on then you can select another 
set of speakers. So for example, this is my uh, uh, monitor has built-in speakers so I select that so then when I get any zoom calls starting then I do actually get the ringtone playing out loud into the room uh, but then obviously the main audio is coming on there just a little small thing I thought I'd mention because I think a lot of people don't realize it's there in the settings uh, but anyway <laughs> that is a little bit of a digression so the question is when might you need to use loopback well that is for if you want to use Ecamm Live where you have a uh, maybe you want to bring in a guest into your Ecamm Live because there is obviously in the pro version of Ecamm Live which you'll have if you're linking in with Zoom uh, then there is interview mode which allows you to bring guests into your Ecamm Live production so imagine if you were say presenting to a group through Zoom where you wanted to have guests on and interview them as part of your Ecamm Live production then uh, that is where you would use loopback because what you'd have there is you would be speaking in your mic which your your guest on your Ecamm Live uh, guest would be hearing and your Zoom people would be hearing your mic because your mic would be going through to Zoom. However, uh, the Zoom sound would not be feeding back into your guest and your guest sound would not be feeding back into your Zoom calls. Another reason why you might want to use loopback is because uh, you might be actually having a Zoom webinar or something like that and you may actually, or meeting, and you may actually want to stream that over to uh, not using the zoom streaming but using ecamm live stream that to youtube or facebook or something like that and there you would have exactly the same problem the zoom sound would not be coming through into ecamm live to then be broadcast so that is what we are talking about when we are talking about loopback with ecamm live and zoom so maybe i should tell you exactly what uh, loopback is so if i come over to my other screen and i will show you get a few windows out of the way exactly what loopback is well it is in essential essentially a uh, program that you can create virtual uh, audio devices and you can also sort of route the sound uh, the audio uh, signals through your computer from one place to another and uh, that, that's perhaps a very very high level overview it's going to make a lot more sense when i actually just show you how to do it and i'm going to show you now how to set up a uh, the audio devices, the two audio devices that you need to get the signal from uh, going both ways from Zoom to Ecamm Live. So I'm going to start by just clicking on here. We've got a blank uh, loopback instance here. So I'm going to click on new audio device. Now what I want to create here is I want to create a, uh, we've got a virtual camera that is coming out of Ecamm Live. So now I want to create a virtual mic to come out of Ecamm Live. So let's call this Ecamm Live virtual mic okay so this is what where we're going to create this virtual mic now as a default when you set up a new div, uh, virtual device it will automatically have this output so this is the output of this virtual mic uh, simulating the output of a real mic uh, and then this is the source now as a default it will put this pass-through in and the pass-through allows basically you to pass any audio into this from other sources and it, and it passed through but that isn't what we want we want to be more specific about it incidentally I did a video all about how I use audio hijack and uh, I'll leave, leave the link to that in the description below and if you did watch that video yesterday uh, when I posted it or maybe today or whenever you watched it in time <laughs> I made it yesterday but uh, in that one I talked about how I had created a virtual device in in uh, loopback and this is just how I did it it's basically just the default device was my virtual device uh, because then I pass the audio from audio hijack into the pass through anyway I digress let's talk about how we're going to set up this Ecamm live virtual mic this can be deleted we do not need that at all because we want to be very specific as I said we want to just pass the audio from my mic and from Ecamm live so I'm going to press on the little plus button here and select uh, the application as Ecamm live and you can see that what that's doing is it's just taking the left and right channels from Ecamm Live and putting it into our output. But I also want to add into that my microphone. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come down to my microphone, which is my Shure MV7. Now what you'll notice here is that my microphone is a single channel. Obviously, it's a single channel mic. Uh, but uh, what this is doing is it's actually splitting the signal to go to both the left and right of the uh, output so it will sound like it's coming from uh, both sides so that actually is all there is to it it's now taking the audio from Ecamm Live and the audio from my microphone and putting it out to this 
output device called Ecamm Live Virtual Mic. Now if I just bring my settings back up here, as if by magic, if I go down to my microphone setting in Zoom and then I click the little drop down, then somewhere in here we should, I might need to just toggle it on and off again actually, one second, if I toggle this off and on, then what we should see is the Ecamm Live virtual mic has now shown up there. So I'll just select that one. And what you can also see is now I've got my Ecamm Live virtual mic selected and uh, those little input levels are still bouncing around. And that's because it is still obviously picking up my microphone. And if I was to be playing anything through Ecamm Live, it would be picking that up as well. So that is basically how we do it. We've got one half of the process done. And now what we need to do is we need to, need to do the same in reverse to get the signal back from the zoom uh, zoom into Ecamm Live. So now we're going to create another virtual device. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to call this one uh, Zoom Virtual Mic. Incidentally, I would always recommend that you use the actual source as the name. So rather than uh, thinking, well, this is going to feed into Ecamm Live, so let's call it Ecamm. <laughs> we want to have the source in the title because then you can use it to route to anywhere and you'll always know where it is coming from. So for example, my Ecamm Live virtual mic, I can now set up one of these for Microsoft Teams and I can now uh, use it rather in Microsoft Teams. And so uh, calling it by the source is in my mind the best naming convention for this. So with the source, again, we need to just take out this pass through because we don't need that. And then we also need to come in here and we need to add in uh, the zoom which is this one and there is also the microphone uh, MV7 so that is now doing the same thing now there's one setting that I need to tell you about that you need to activate on both of these uh, so first of all is in this one where we've got these options uh, we've got options for the microphone we can adjust the levels if we want to adjust those levels at all so that you will have one louder than other if you have multiple microphones you can do some sort of uh, managing of those levels in here but specifically we want this one to be unchecked mute when capturing and that means that when this is operational we don't want it to actually mute the sound coming out of zoom because we want to still be able to hear it in our monitors so we're going to toggle that one off and we're going to do the same in the Ecamm Live as well We've also got the option here to mute when capturing. So we're going to turn that one off as well. So the last step then is to actually bring the Zoom feed into Ecamm Live. So let's do that now. I'll come into my demo mode again. And then basically you'll see down at the bottom, and I should just point out, if you have got Ecamm Live open when you set this up, you may need to just exit it and restart it again, as I've had to do <laughs> in order for it to show up. But basically in your audio settings, so don't forget that you've got audio uh, settings, is this little window on the side. You can click this button here, just in the uh, up there somewhere, <laughs> to show and hide your sound levels. Uh, or you can ch change it from uh, your uh, mic settings here. You can select the mic from there. But let me just show you in this drop down box. You can see here we've got this Zoom virtual mic. So that is the microphone that we set up, the virtual mic. So uh, that is what you would select in Ecamm Live. And that is about it. You've now got your uh, Ecamm Live sound and your mic going into Zoom. And you've got your Zoom sound coming e in, into Ecamm Live. And that is how and why you would use Ecamm Live. Uh, loop back. <laughs> so I hope that that has uh, helped and answered uh, some questions about when and if you would need e uh, le need loop back. Uh, if you found that useful, please go and like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever I make a new video. Uh, but as always, you don't have to wait too long. I've got more videos coming up next and I'll also leave a link to uh, another playlist for you as well. Have a great day.